Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to a set of attributes that really enhance your debugging experience in c -sharp. These attributes are extensively used by the BCL and the .NET team in general and you might be using them as a consumer without even noticing. So let's see how we can make our debugging experience better by using them for our own purposes. If you like the above content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe or ring the notification bell and for more training check out nickchampsters.com. All right, so what I have here is a simple console application and I have just a program.cs over here with nothing in it and then this point class. So this class is your typical point in 2D space. It has an X and a Y property over here and then I have a distance to method which allows me to get the distance between two points and return the double. So that's what we're going to be working on. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to create a new point here so point a and i'm just gonna give it uh, some coordinates so let's say this and that and what i'm going to do is just go ahead and read the key here because i don't want it to exit the debugger so if i do that i'm gonna go ahead and uh, debug this code and as i step over this point as you can see here this point has the two attributes x and y but by default it's collapsed so all i see is point now what you might have noticed is that if you go ahead into this uh, point or any other class and you override the two string method and in this case what we would probably have is something like this x is and then i'm going to specify the x value and then y is and i'm going to specify the y value which would maybe be an easy way to print that point to the logs or something else then i can go back here stick a breakpoint again debug it again and then step over this and now this time as you can see over here even if i don't expand it it shows me the x and the y because it gets that from the two string method when i expand i can see all of them and that is very useful to a developer because i don't have to expand everything to see what the property is all about all i can see is just seeing the debugger that yeah i just hover over this i can see the value and that's really helpful and if i need more details i might just drill into that However, isn't it annoying that you kind of have to override the two-string method to get that experience? And what if you don't want to override the two-string method because you're using the actual value somewhere else? Well, this is where a set of four different attributes come into play. And I'm going to start with the one you're probably going to be using the most if you opt in to use this feature. And that is the debugger display attribute. So what I can do now is I can go to the class level and I can specify a debugger display attribute and this is in the bcl i don't have to use any package and this allows me now to pass down a value and this value which can follow a specific format allows me to offer the same experience as the two string for the debugger only so i can say x is and i can use these curly braces and then i can point to the property over here so i can say x is this and then y is and you can see that I actually have IntelliSense in Rider that allows me to select the property as well. And I say, why is this? And now I can go ahead and debug the code. I don't have a two string method. I want to remind you that I did delete that. There is nothing in here. And when I step over this, and then as you can see, I have the same debugging experience as before, but now I did not have to override the two string method. And actually I can change this to whatever I want. You don't want to have the X and the Y. You want to have a different name sure go ahead you can have that in fact what you can do is even have code in here so x multiplied by y in here and i want to print that now i don't know why you would do this in this specific scenario but just to prove that it works i'm gonna go ahead and debug and as you can see that code is executed and i'm getting 54. so you can do some very interesting things with this uh, debugger display and actually there's even more properties here that you can set like name target type target type name but they're way more niche i haven't really seen them ever used um people actually use alternatives for those which i'm going to show you in a second but yeah this is probably the one you're going to be using the most if you're using whatever you're going to learn in this video however there's even more interesting attributes here the one i want to start from and i'm going to just uh, actually i'm not going to comment it out i'm just going to revert it to x is this um and then y is this just so we can see all the features together uh, what i'm going to do is let's say that i'm debugging this code and as i'm expanding this over here so i'm stepping over this 
and I'm expanding this. I can see both the X and the Y. Let's say I have another property that I don't want to see. Now, in this case, I'm not going to create a new property. I'm just going to use what we have. But let's say you had other properties that you don't care about when you're debugging. How can we hide those properties only during debugging? Well, I can go ahead and I can say that, hey, I don't want to see Y over here. So I'm going to say debugger browsable and I'm going to specify never here. So now if I go ahead and I debug this piece of code and I step over this, then as you can see, I still get it on the debugger display, but it is no longer here. It is gone. It should be here. It isn't. It still exists in the class, but I don't have to see it when I'm debugging. And that's usually what you would do with something completely insignificant. Now, I haven't seen this used too much because some people want to know about these properties and want to know what's in their class. But if you guarantee that the user consuming your library, let's say, should not worry about that, then you can hide it. Now, since we are on this topic, on this specific attribute, this attribute also has two other alternatives, collapsed and root hidden. Now, collapsed because the default behavior is collapsed because it's not expanded doesn't really do much but root hidden actually does if i go ahead and let's go ahead real quick and create um, a public record and call that sub point and just have an int x and an int y over here and let's say i have in here um, an array of sub points so sub point array and say sub points and set the default value to a few uh, sub points, which would be a new sub point. And let's say that you know, this is like that. And then I have another one over here, which is something like that, right? Now, the way this looks when you're debugging, and let's go ahead and debug again, is that it just looks like this. You have sub points, sub point two, and you can expand and see exactly what's going on. And the sub points actually can show you here their text because record overrides to string. So this is why this even exists here. But in any case, what you can do with this attribute is you can go ahead and say, hey, these sub points, I want the root of them hidden. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and debug this again. And I'm going to go ahead, zoom in again and step over this. And as you can see now, the root of the array doesn't exist. It just shows you the elements on top level. Why would you want to do that? I don't know, but you can. So I'm just showing you how the behavior works. I don't think you should be using this specific feature, but there's probably a reason why it's there. But in any case, that's enough with that attribute. Now, there's a couple of other attributes that are very interesting. However, the rider debugger doesn't respect them. If you're on Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code, I think that this would work for you. However, in rider, they're just ignored. Let's start with the first one. So the first one is debugger hidden. If you apply this attribute or anything, then this thing, in this case, this method will be hidden from the debugger, meaning that even if you have a breakpoint in there, it will not be hit. Let's go ahead and create a point B here and just a few other stuff here. Uh, and what I can do is try to get the distance and I can say distance of point A from point B is whatever, it's that thing. So here, if I stick a breakpoint, remember I have a breakpoint in this method as well, but it has the debugger hidden attribute. If I go ahead and I run this and then I F5, I say continue execution, it will still hit that uh, breakpoint and it's visible in the call stack. However, if I wasn't using Rider, then the debugger would completely ignore that. It would step over that thing, not hit the breakpoint, not acknowledge the method and just move on. It wouldn't even be available in the call stack with the debugger hidden attribute, which is actually different from the next attribute over here, which is the debugger step through. So what this does now is effectively the same. However, there's a few differences. First, if you have this attribute in a debugger that respects it, then it treats that as external code, not as something that doesn't exist at all. So if you want to know that something is there, you might want to go with this. It will still skip the breakpoint. So this thing should not be hit during a debugging session. However, the other difference that these two attributes have is that debugger hidden cannot be applied on structs or classes. So if I say debugger hidden over here, this doesn't work. However, debugger 
step through does. So if you want to just exclude complete classes or structs, you can do that with this attribute. You cannot use debugger hidden. Now, these two, again, are way more niche. I think they have much more value for the .NET team, Microsoft, and their BCL code that they might not want you to step through something. Uh, I don't think most library developers should even be considering those. I can definitely see tons of usage for the debugger display attribute and even the never one if you want to hide something that should not be visible, uh, but not so much for things like root hidden, debugger hidden, and debugger step through. There is a last thing I want to show you, which again, I think it's niche. However, it is good to know and cover all the potential things you can use in this scope. And that is the debugger type proxy attribute. So what is it? Well, let me go ahead and just comment this thing out. And I'm going to go in this class and I'm going to say private class point proxy. And I'm going to make a proxy class to surface that point class to my debugger in a different way. So what does that mean? Well, I'm going to go ahead first and have a constructor. And that constructor will accept my point class. So I'm going to say point and take that. And then I'm going to just store it here, private read only point underscore point and set that from the constructor. So I'm getting the point and I can now expose things through this proxy class. It can have completely different properties. In my case, I'm not going to go completely different. I'm just going to rename the two properties that I already have, but it could have completely different properties and you can surface your object in a completely different way. So I'm going to say point A and then point B, just like that. And I can go up here to the point class and I can say debugger type proxy and I can say type of point proxy. So I can do that. And once I do that, watch what happens. I'm going to go ahead and run this. And now if I just zoom in, as you can see, I see A and B. I see the proxy class details, not the original one. But you have to be careful because if I go ahead and I specify a debug display attribute on the proxy itself and I go to the debugger again, then as you can see over here, if I zoom in, that is not being respected. You still have to apply it on the point itself, even though the proxy class comes in for the properties and the content. It's a bit weird, but once you understand all the rules, uh, it makes more sense. Now, this is another one of those things that are very, very niche and you probably wouldn't want to use. However, I did think that it would be interesting to show you how these things work behind the scenes. So to recap, the debugger display attribute, I absolutely use that a lot, especially in library code it is very, very viable and makes the experience of the developer very, very easy when you're just debugging through code. Hiding something from the debugger could definitely work, especially if you absolutely know how something should be consumed by a consumer. The rest is just information about knowing how things work and I wouldn't really use them, but these two very, very valuable. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find a link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, ring the bell as well, and I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.